That 10,000 are already owned almost like five properties, which were over like over mm. two million at mm. the time. Yes. Wow. That's why I want I share information so that everyone can have a piece of land right. that they can benefit from. Good evening. As you know, my name is Esti Class, and I'm the host of the First Time Home Buyer Show. This week, Wednesday, we're chatting to an absolutely amazing woman, Lebu Khang, also known as Lebu Grass. She's been in the property industry for 14 years, and it's a story that we do not want to miss as we listen to the mistakes, the ups, the downs, the trials, everything that Lebu's gone through. So we, too, do not make those same mistakes. But as you know, we bring you amazing content every weekday this night. We've got Zaman Tungwa Kumalo. What the private property podcast that's monday to friday at 7 p.m live on facebook and youtube and instagram and of course if you're interested in farming and agriculture mbali another empowered woman talks about farming and how you too can get involved in that that's every tuesday and thursday at 8 p.m and chad vivieros is every monday and friday night at 8 p.m on your screens that's on facebook Instagram and YouTube. Without further ado, I'm on your screens every Wednesday at 8 p.m. As you've seen this evening, I have an absolutely amazing guest with me, Lebu Grass. She goes as Lebu Grass on Facebook and all the social media platforms. And also, we chatting about the ups and the downs, the trials, the mistakes Lebu's made in the property industry, and even regrets that Lebu has because she's invested in property for 14 years. So who better to learn from than Lebu Grass, another woman who is driven, optimistic, and motivated and continues to grow her property portfolio. Good evening, Lebu. How are you? I'm okay, and you? Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule, you know, investing in property. Lebu's very busy. And, you know, spending that, taking that drive and joining us here today. I absolutely appreciate it, Lebu. I want to jump straight into it, right? And you've been in the property game for almost 14 years. Started at a very young age, younger than what I am right now. But just before we even get to that, we're celebrating women on the show, especially for the month of August. And we're talking to empowered women in the property industry. And so many people recommended you to me to have on the show, which is absolutely amazing. So I feel privileged to be sitting with you in the space this evening. So Lebu, do you think, right, with regards to women being in property, do you think that there is a lack of women in the property industry? Mm, what I can say is that uh, I think for the last three years I've been following the stats on the news and on the news articles basically. Uh, we've having more women joining in, in the property industry for the past three years. So mm. women are the ones who are the top buyers of properties. S uh, secondly, it's married couples and thirdly, it's males. So I think we are currently having many women. So women are being empowered to join in the industry of the mm. property market. Which is a good thing because now we're growing as yes. women to join the property market. So Lebu, what got you at such a young age, 25, when you first started your property journey, what got you interested in property to begin with? Okay, I think the main reason I, ch I, I became interested in property when I was like 14, mm. um, okay, my grandmother, I started the history by saying that my grandmother grew up in Limpopo at a small village in Hamujaji areas. So she came to Jobek, I think, in the 50s. When she came to Jobek in the 50s, she was staying in Sophia Town. Mm. So when they created South Western Township, which is Soweto, then she was awarded a house there. Mm. So we grew up in that house in Midlands. So growing up in Midlands, we've seen a lot of people who were uh, involved in property business, but through back rooms. So I learned from that younger age, as early as 14 years, that people were making money in the property industry in the townships by opening up by building big rooms in the in the townships so that's when i started becoming interested in this property journey then obviously i did research with my grandmother then i found out how she was awarded the house and then at a later stage from 14 years old then i was so much interested in having my own property mm -hmm. so i knew from 14 years that i wanted wow. to have my own property so when i was permanently employed at age 24 mm -hmm. then i started going through property private property in other pages to check for the properties that I'll be interested in buying. Mm -hmm. Then I came across one property that was going to be on auction. I think it was in Midlands because at the time I was interested in staying in the same hood where right. my grandmother was awarded a house. Yeah. So I went through and attended my first auction when I was 24. So unfortunately, I couldn't be able to purchase that house because of my pre-approval, I think, was for 350 and the house was sold for 450. Uh -huh. So the people that I was bidding against, most of them were already at the time in the property industry and most of them they were business people so from that day i started engaging with some of them wanting to find out how are they doing it and then from that time the advice means that 
the most property business I can do in a township, that's, that's good. It can be multi led mm. So they advised me to start with multi led Then at age 25, that's when I went and bought a new development house that I bought off plan. Mm. So at age 25. So for that house, I was approved. So that was my first property. It was in Soweto as well. Mm. And you're yes. still growing your pop property portfolio. Are you still based in Soweto or have you gone, have you branched out now? Okay. I've, I bought that house in 2008. And then the main reason for me buying that house at first it was for residential and then we were staying in that house and what i did in that house i built multi let as i was advised by these other property developers so that's multi let now i'm using it as a multi let for airbnb mm. so it is like <clears throat> i was able to like move around from using it for residential yes. and do a business on it, mm. which is going to be multi mm. And then in 2017, when I paid off that house, I paid off that house. So after paying off that house, I went and bought another house in the same in the same area yeah. in Protead Lane. Mm. So that house, I bought it with the main purpose of saying, now this is going to be my retirement house in a form of cash flow. Mm. I'm not going to stay in the house. Mm. I'm just going to buy a house to rent it out. And since it's got a big yard, I am going to build multilets, which is the, is the project that I'm currently doing in that in that house. So I'm going to build multilets in that house. So I'm busy with that project currently. So in the house, I'm buying it currently now for cash flow. And in future, it's going to be one of the house for my retirement that's going to at least find finance my retirement uh, lifestyle in future. So in that same year, I think same year, I bought three houses because I bought that house and then I bought two houses in Pretoria. What I normally do in the property industry is that I usually watch the sauna. So the sauna always give me guidance of where to invest. What I normally even share with my mentees is that I normally invest where the private companies invest and where the government invest. So that's my main goal. So the reason I started in Soweto with Protead Lane, I knew that there were so many projects that were upcoming there. It's going to be one of the industrial hub in Soweto Township. Mm -hmm. So I concentrated my, my investment, investment in that investment. area mm -hmm. so that it can prolong me for longer term. Like I can start making money now while they're busy developing the area. Mm -hmm. And in future, as the area is already developed, then I can be able to make money from that mm -hmm. area. So the second area that I invested in, it was in Pretoria. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wonder Park, current park, uh, closer to Wonder Park Mall, current park. The reason I invested there, and I, and I, and I always tell you that I usually follow the, the sauna. Right. I realized that there were going to be so many projects in Pretoria, whereby they were going to start building uh, the motor vehicles hubs there in Pretoria, like your Ford, BMW. Mm -hmm. Then I started investing there based on that mm. and there is, it is closer to the university as well and then it's closer to the shopping mall mm. and most people who can't afford to stay in the Pretoria CBD they yeah. always prefer staying there so I invested there I think I bought two apartments there so what I normally do my strategy is that when I buy in an urban area I go for sanctional titles when I buy in a township I go for freehold titles so that I can be able to build my multi lets because multi lets right. are the in thing in the in the hood in the townships exactly. yes and you know like I said to the viewers before that this will be a show where we get all your tricks and tips and we, I've never heard that before you know to watch the sonar to prepare for your future investments so already that's an amazing tip that I think even if you're a first time investor that's so important to just take and research is very important I mean you started researching already at the age of 14 right yes when you saw your grandmother doing these things and now till today would you say that when you started researching at the age of 14 up until now things have changed through the property industry yes i think especially in the townships things have changed that because previously while i know that where i grew up like in Midlands, people will rent out their rooms for 300 500 but now the rooms there the normal bachelor rooms because they don't have uh, uh, in suits bathrooms and kitchenettes so they usually rent them out for 1.2 so now the industry has changed in such a way that we are bringing in the urban and cbd lifestyle yes. to the wood mm. so now when you build in the townships you are trying to build something that's got your kitchenette, your, your bachelor rooms must have kitchenettes and they must have bathrooms inside or showers mm -hmm. so that people can be able to say, I, I do love staying in the wood, but I don't want to stay in the CBD. So you still give them the same lifestyle mm -hmm. in the, in the, in the, where, in the they're wood, where they're exactly. comfortable in staying. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about township investment is that it's a market that's between the urban area and 
and, and the lesser poor areas. Mm -hmm. So in, in a case whereby somebody has to, maybe they lose their job when they're staying in, in, in an urban area, they're able to move to say, I can go and stay in a township. And somebody that was staying in a maybe a poor area in the township, they want to, to upgrade them. They can say, I want to go and stay in this kind of multi right. So that was my, my, my strategy to say that I'm able to juggle in the, in, um, to be in the middle of both my of both markets that's why I think that's what has been uh, has been transformed in the township uh, multi right. uh, uh, rental based, uh, income mm, and I think what's so important is that you now um, and we hear this a lot on the show is as a property investor you need to create opportunities for if you were in your tenant shoes would you live there Yes. Yes. So, and that's what you've done because you've, if you go back to Soweto now, you would still live in your property because you've made it and you're right, you're using CBD, quality, whether it's en suite or whether whatever, you know, yes. how things are looking. You've created that lifestyle of living mm. for people in the township. Yes. So I will be able to do that. Mm. Like, for instance, the, the, the cottage house that I'm telling you, at first we're using it as a multi Yeah. But with transformation, we're now using it for Airbnb. Mm. The cottage now hosts even international. Uh, tourists Tourist, and travelers yeah. and they become so impressed at the way that we have tried to do the decorations in their house yeah so they are very impressed because we've got nice fittings in yeah. their house they well, are suitable for their lifestyles exactly because so, they're also coming from yes. overseas so in future um, my plan is that with that house i'm going to change it into a guest house the full the full house is going to be changed into a guest house mm. and i don't need to start buying furniture and start renovating because it's already the, into that standard mm -hmm. yes that's amazing because you always need to have goals for the future right your yeah. property doesn't always need to just stay what it is you can expand you can do better you mm. can get more uh, cash flow from this one property mm. even if you invested in it 14 years ago that property can still you know elevate and give you more as a, as a passive income i want to find out from you label um, would you say, let's say there are young women watching the show this evening and they want to start investing in property, what would, would you say there's opportunity for them to actually start and how can they start? Okay, there's so many opportunities for them to start. At the moment, I'm busy mentoring some of them, very young. I think they are, most of them, they are between 21 and 30 that I'm busy mentoring. I can say some of them became home, home buyers, I think early this year or late last year when I started with them. Some of them have bought almost maybe two to three properties already. So there is a market for everyone to buy. What I can advise them is that, because me now entering the market, remember I'm an employee, ne? I'm an employee and being an employee for me to enter the market, I had to use my pay slips, I had of to use course. my credit record to be able to qualify mm. so that I can be able to venture into the market. Mm. So what I normally advise them to do if they are employed, I normally advise them to to work around their credit their credit uh, history and credit scoring so that they can be able to venture into the market. Another thing I advise them to work around their affordability as well. So those are the main key things that I advise them on. And I also advise them to start saving for transfer costs in case where they already want to buy already existing property. Mm -hmm. And then for those that want to buy off plan, then I take them through to say, this is how you go about it. So what I normally do is to coach them around their affordability and according to their credit mm -hmm. history. Because that's very important in yes. order to achieve your property yes. goals. And like you said, a lot of the women are young, right? Yes. So um, a lot of us coming into this don't even know how to start making our credit score mm -hmm. look better don't even know how to start saving because it's so difficult once you first start working the first thing we think about is spending all the money because you didn't work last month so mm -hmm. i have things to do and things to look out for and bills to pay that i haven't been paying because i have been maybe unemployed mm -hmm. but what and i think it's so difficult to start saving and i always love asking my guests this what how do you advise your mentees who are women in the property industry as well to just start saving because it can be so difficult with minimal wage Okay. Well, like a saving strategy, how do we just start? Okay, with a saving strategy, I also take them through because of Mina, I'm a, I love saving because that's the skill that my mom taught me when she was very young. Mm. I think uh, she, when she started, she was a street hawker. So in most of the time when she was busy selling, 
every weekend, like every Friday, then she would go with me. I think she was banking with Standard Bank at the time. Mm. Like she would take me to the bank with her and she would show me how to save. From that young age, I started knowing how to save. Mm. Hence, I was even be, I was able to pay off my prop, my first property, I think, in eight years. Wow. Then I've paid off another one in three years. Wow. So, it's, mm. uh, so I take them through all the strategies I use mm. of them, teaching them how to save. Because mm. it's very important in the property industry because you also need to have cash flow that you are busy saving so that let's say you come up across a big property deal or it's just a small property deal then you want to invest in it and then at that time maybe you don't qualify with the banks mm -hmm. or you need a deposit or you would need money for transfer fees and everything mm -hmm. then you at least need to have money so i always encourage them i've taken them through saving the best way to save is to have lesser debts if you have lesser debts then you are able to save because mm -hmm. of what you have extra you are going to save i can tell you that in my space, I represent, I normally tell them that I represent the lower income earning people entering the property market. Mm. When I started buying my first property, I think my take home was 5,000 rand. Mm. And then when I bought my other three properties, which were going to be four, I was going to have four properties, then I was earning about 10,000 rand at the time. So my advantage was that I was having a mentor for the, third, for the three properties that I bought. Mm. I was having a mentor that took me through before to say Lebhan, this is how you can do it yeah. so this are all, all these other years i was i think the most important thing is to in also invest in your education mm -hmm. around the property space you don't just go and buy you start investing as i hence i told you that i started for the first property i started when i was 14 mm -hmm. up until when i was 25 mm -hmm. and then for the other properties i started researching about the property market investment when i was mm -hmm. 25 up until when i was 34 when that's when i bought at least three properties in a year, then the following year I bought a property. And again, the other property, the fifth property that I bought, mm. I didn't even have money. It was a deal between me and the seller. It was a piece of land. It was a deal between me and the seller where we used an installment buying mm -hmm. kind of deal. I didn't even have to go to the bank. Mm. The, we, we made a deal with the seller that, no, I don't have money. I've learned something about installment buying. Are you willing to sell me through the installment buying? Mm. Because it was a piece of land and you wanted to make money out of that, we agreed on the installment buying that I will pay that property for over five years. Wow. Then in the fifth year, then I can go for the balance. Like this, this the, for, the fifth, for the five years that I'll be paying, yeah. it will be a deposit. And for the fifth year, for the sixth year, then the money that I will go and apply for a bond. Mm. That's how we agreed with the, with the seller. Mm. So there are so many strategies that you can use. You can either use the bank's money, you can also use the installment buying mm. for you to venture into property as well. And I have two things to say about this, which is so important. You're right. Research is so important, but what you've just taught me and, and, and showed me is that negotiation is everything mm. you negotiated with someone to like whatever however you plan to pay for this thing it's a piece of land but it's still now after six years it's yours yes not his anymore but yes. you negotiated Peter, yes. and you made sure that that is now yours and then the second thing i want to talk about is you live you, you literally le living proof that you can invest in property if you earn less than ten thousand rand a month yes because at, at ten thousand i already owned almost like five properties do you see? Yes, which, which were over like over mm. two million at mm. the time. Yes. Wow. And that is the burning question. I think that a lot of people, when th we watch the first time home buyer show, is how can I do it if I've just started working? How can I do it if I only earn eight thousand a month? And yeah. And I think when you started working, that's I think that's the that's the best time. Mm. That's I, I think that's what I always advise people that. When you start working, that's the best time because you are not overcommitted mm. with so many debts and there's right. not so many people offering you debts at, this, at that mm. time. So that's the best time for you to start investing in property mm. because you'll be having, remember when you, you apply for a property, let's say you apply through a bank, they will want to know how much disposal income you're having. Yeah. So if you are not overcommitted, that 8,000 rent, it can be enough. And another thing that I always advise people is buy what you can afford. Mm. You understand? Mm. You cannot want to buy a one million property earning 8,000 rand. Yeah. So in my case, my mentor taught me that Lebo Hang, always make sure that you buy below the property market. Mm. So if a property in a property market, a property is 500,000 rand. That's when he told me how to negotiate. He used to take me through his property deals. Sometimes I'll take him through my property deals. I can say, I, like what I can tell you, that I've ne in all of the properties that I bought, 
I bought all of them below property value. Mm. I never bought them at the market value. Yeah. I bought them below and it was very less. Sometimes it was even double. Let's say property is 500,000. We'll even negotiate to, to 250,000 wow. because he, he is so scared in such a way that he'll go with me and then he'll look at so many defects that we are going to decrease the property. Mm. And before I even go there, I'll give him the, he'll ask for the address and then he'll go through the internet and check through how much was the market, how much did the owner buy it for. Mm -hmm. So already when we engage the owner, we already know that the owner bought this property for 150. So if we say we're giving him 350, so obviously 200,000, it's so much profit for him. Mm -hmm. So that's how we try to negotiate. So I think my negotiation skills have worked for me. It didn't also work for me only with the owners, the, the sellers. It has also worked for me with the bank consultant. I've created a relationship with the bank consultant in such a way that immediately when you start assessing my applications, it just it doesn't just end there after you approve me for the bond. Mm -hmm. I still keep your contact. I still keep and I also refer people to mm -hmm. you as well. Mm -hmm. So I keep a relationship with them so that I can be able to also negotiate for interest rate. Yeah. So you'll find me getting a five hundred thousand property for three fifty, and then still I'll be paying lesser right. through the interest rate. Mm -hmm. So already I've bought low, and obviously that's what that's positive cash flow for me mm -hmm. as well. The two ends: negotiating and networking. Yes. To always stay in contact with these people because they can teach you something right and to always keep their contacts because you're going to need them again yes. and building that network is it's not just your mentor it's mm -hmm. not just your financial advisor or banker it is the uh, contractor it mm -hmm. is the person who's building it is all the it's from the people on the top all the way to someone who is just sweeping and cleaning one of your properties on a daily basis, whatever the case, this is your network and this is your team that you need to obviously yes, build yes. this relationship with and continue going. So Lebu, we've spoken in depth about, you know, solutions, tricks and how you've actually achieved your property goals. But were there any mistakes that you've made along this journey? I can say there are, I, I don't, on the journey of me being a property investor, I don't think I've made any mistakes. But the mistake that I think I've made was when I was the first time home buyer, mm. which I want to at least alert the people out there so Please. that they can be, they can also take note of this. The only thing I made is that I didn't have enough research. I don't think, remember when I bought my first property, I only did research. I didn't have any mentor. Right. So mm. I didn't know most of the things. The person that I was, relying, I was relying on was the estate agent who was guiding me through. So I went and applied for this house off plan. One thing I missed is that to is to apply for a government subsidy called FLISP. Yes. So I didn't apply for it, and because I was a low income earner at the time, I qualified to to to, to, to I qualified for FLISP. Mm -hmm. So I didn't I was not able to apply for it. So I missed an opportunity for applying for it. So that's one uh, that's what I want to tell most mm -hmm. low income home buyers, first time, first -time mm -hmm. home buyers, to say, when you want to buy your first property, you also need to speak with your consultant and your estate agent that will be helping you with your property deal mm. to say that I need to apply for flips because you have a right as a South African a, a, a citizen yeah. to, to be provided subsidy with government for your mm. first time, for your first time a, um, a house, purchase of a purchase. investments. And so, so would you say that for one of your biggest mistakes is not doing enough research on how you can actually qualify to buy your first home? Yes. And then um, after obviously, you know, finding out all of that and then buying your first home could you apply for flisp after no because you had already bought and you, you can apply if it's it's between it's, it's still within 12 months oh okay. even if you bought it's still within 12 months mm -hmm. of your purchase then you can still apply so in my case i started learning about flips i think yeah i think f almost like five years later oh, that's okay. when i started learning about flisp mm. yes so you couldn't rectify your mistake in the moment no mm. <laughs> you seem so sad i think that's what one of the mistakes in ish <laughs> it's one of the regrets yes basically. a regret mm. but besides the regrets just before we wrap up and close off the show what are some of the rewarding moments on your through your 14 years of property my rewarding moments is that um Hence, I told you that I always network ne? Mm. with the consultant. The relationship I have with them, it's so very nice. The relationship I've had with the estate agent, in such a way, some of the estate agents that I dealt with were part of my mentor. Like in a case whereby I would 
not be having any purchases with them at the moment. You find that I'm not buying anything. I'll contact them to say, when you go for your property deals, please take me with. Right. Are you having any property deals this weekend because I'm not working weekends? Can I come with you on a Saturday or on a Sunday? They'll say, no, you can come and accompany me. Mm. So that has made me to learn so much about the market and to learn so much because that time I was still in Johannesburg. So it has made me to learn so much about the market in the south, the market in the north, the market mm. in the west end and the east end. So I learned a lot when I was busy traveling with them and learning all the tricks in the mm. market. So I created, so my networking has worked for me in such a way that I'm so happy. It also worked for me even with my tenants. Mm. And I told you that right now I work far far away from yes, home yes. and I've got properties in Pretoria. So I'll find most people who, who I'm mentoring asking me that, Lebohang, since you are far away from home, okay, the ones in, in the townships, my mom, my family yes, are my, my are yes. my power team. Mm. They are the ones who are assisting me with the Airbnbs mm. and assisting me with the other long-term renters there. So my reliance on the ones in Pretoria, my network are my tenants in such a way that my tenants some of my tenants who are no longer even staying in my apartment, they are now part of my family. Oh, wow. They are part of my network in such a way that when a tenant moves out, mm -hmm. she is the one who sources me the next <laughs> the tenant. Next tenant. Wow. And you find mm -hmm. that they are not sourcing people who are not going to be problematic or unreliable. Or unreliable. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they are sourcing me the very same people who are going to treat me this very same way that they are treating me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll even advertise on the net and then they'll be the one who will be assisting with the viewing and exactly. stuff. So mm -hmm. I've created a network with them. So that's one thing that I love. And I know when they're ready also to buy their own properties, I'm the go-to person. Exactly. Like I'm always the go-to. As you mentioned that you need to create your network with the contractors and everyone, yes. the interior. Deal. So everywhere where I'm at, I'm the go-to person, whether it's property, whether it's interior deco, whether it's construction. Mm -hmm. So I'm the go-to person because of, I always choose reliable people and I always create a good relationship mm. with them. So I can say that's one of the most highlights that I'm having. That's and currently I'm so happy that with that networking, it has worked for me even on social media to such an extent that I've even created the the, the, the mentoring group. That's mm. I call it my labels, labels tribe. Mm. I've even created my own tribe where I'm mentoring young people, even some people are older than me, couples, I'm mentoring them on becoming first time home buyers. Some of them, they are they already have homes and then I'm mentoring them to have their own to have their own uh, property portfolio, mm. maybe buying their second okay. property for investment, for mm. retirement and all those things. So I'm busy mentoring them. So I'm creating a relationship with them as well in such a way that I become happy when South Africans buy properties, especially women. Yeah. I become happy when women buy properties because some of them, they're not only buying for investment, they are buying to shelter their children. So for, for me, shelter is a very important thing that I feel each and every human being must have. Mm -hmm. So if it was according to me, I would say everyone should have their own property, yeah. according to me. Mm. That's how I wish for them, that everyone should have the their own property. Of yes. South Africa is so even future. when you are renting, you are my tenant, you don't end up being my tenant only. Mm. I make sure if there are property deals, I even encourage you that, no, there is this property deals. Then most of the tenant will explain to me their financial challenges. Mm. I will also try to help those who want help and then try to help them so that they can be able to even qualify. Mm. Yes. So I can say even the first property deal that I assisted, I think that was the close friends. The first, first one, I think it was in 2013. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in 2013, that's the first deal. So previously, I used to assist only people who were within my circle, which mm -hmm. were my friends, my family, my colleagues. So right now, I'm so happy that I'm assisting strangers. Exactly. Yes, I'm so happy that I'm assisting many South Africans from all over the country. I'm even assisting people from the Sadiq region, your Botswana, your Namibia. Mm -hmm. I'm their go-to person when they need assistance mm -hmm. around the property market. That's amazing, because now you also yes. still, you're continuing to grow your own network. Yes. And you, I think you answered my final, or almost final question is, um, I wanted to ask you, what do you, for you, for Label, what is the hope for women in the future in the property industry? And something you said that is absolutely amazing is that you hope that each and every South African has their own shelter, their own home, their mm. own, you know, and for everyone to just have their own home. But what else would you say is your hope for women in the property industry in the future? Okay, in the future, my hope for women is to venture into commercial and industrial property. At the moment, I've noticed women enter into residential because of the issue that as women, we are the naturals. We are the ones who should make sure that children have a home. Mm. That is why property is, a close, is so close to a woman because it's, a, it's, it's them saying that I'm buying a shelter for my children. I want when I leave 
this world, my children have a shelter. Mm. So I don't want women to only look at that. Because of the industry that I'm working on, mm. except for property, the industry that I'm working on professionally, mm. I've seen how other people are making money through commercial and industrial properties. properties yeah. So I want more women to venture, even if uh, they come together and venture into property, uh, into commercial property mm. and industrial property. The commercial and industrial property, I want them to enter, enter into is women having to own storage and manufacturing warehouses. Mm. And then number two, I want them to own um, what theme parks mm. because remember if we own theme, can, theme parks children mostly we take them to all these theme parks yeah. so we need to own them as women number two another thing i want them to own something like container depots because that's what i do that's mm. part of the work that i do on a daily basis so i want them to say they are the future owners of the container depots and then they can own farms as well mm. for for us to be able to have agriculture and have food and all those things livestock and everything so i want them to own farms mm. and then i think the fifth one i can say we can start owning our own schools as well because some of my grandmothers from my paternal my paternal side they were the first women to build a school in a village so they are amongst the first women to build a school in a village with their own bare hands so i want women to also in future to own schools so something that's related to say our children are going to benefit from not benefit by terms of saying they're going to inherit but even on a daily basis if we own schools they're going to go and study there. if yeah, we own yeah. farms they're going to eat from those ones if we own container depots we can have storages and all those things all these things that people are bringing into the country they're going to store them there and, and they're going to be able to benefit from that and i think that's so important and that's a lovely way to close the show is that us as women need to play a part in what our future and our generation and our children are going to start partaking in and start being involved in mm -hmm. and that is so powerful and i to all the viewers at home i hope that we can take this advice and and figure out a way on how we can just start, right? Lebu, mm -hmm. you've given us a lot of information on how we can actually just start investing in property, but now you've given us even more information. Let's let's look at commercial, let's look at theme parks, let's look at schools. Mm -hmm. um, how do we start that journey of investing in property? Because property is not just residential. There mm -hmm. is more to this, it's massive. Yes. There's so much. Yes. Thank so you. that's what I want them to, to look mm. at. I don't want people to look at property as just buy two lets. Mm. We can own cotton farms whereby people we know that they're going to benefit from clothing and mm. stuff. So that's how I want people to look at land. So land, when coming to land, it, I'm so passionate about it. I always tell people that out of all the businesses in the world, most businesses are done on land. Mm. You understand? Yes, we can have digital businesses, but the people who will be doing those digital businesses, they'll be doing sitting where? On <laughs> land. So land yes. becomes the most important part mm. in my life, and I think it's the most important part in everyone's life. Mm. That's why I want to, I share information so that everyone can have a piece of land right. that they can benefit from. We can do a whole lot of things with that piece of land that are different as women mm. as well. Thank you so much, Levu, for taking out the time. And that's so important because everything is done on land. And if we can just aim to own a piece of something, you know, residential, commercial, schools, uh, just a, a plot, land, mm. and that can be your start and then eventually, you know, continue your property journey. Just to close off, and our final question for you this evening, Levu, is how do we join Lebu Hang's tribe? Okay, currently I run my trap on my my tribe and mentoring sessions on a WhatsApp group mm -hmm. and then Zoom sessions as well. I'm trying to expand my tribe into other platforms, which I'm still researching, you know. I don't want to just jump in. So I'm still researching that very soon, maybe I'll be having my YouTube channels, I'll be having some conference, uh, uh, some conference centers where we can invite women so that we can be able to teach them this thing. So I'm still learning from those who have already done those of things. Course. So they're busy mentoring me on, on, those, on, on the things that they've done so that I can be able to also, when I start, I want people to be able to, to know that I've got experience in this, I've done research on this one. So at the moment, I'm doing it on my WhatsApp group and Zoom sessions. Mm. Yes, that's so, how I mentor my tribe. Mm, okay, and I think, so we find you on Facebook, obviously, under yes. Label Grass. Yes, and I've got a Facebook mm. page called Label Grass Crips as mm. well. They can find me there. Maybe quickly tell the viewers why are we calling you Label Grass? Okay. <laughs> Okay, my, my, my real name is Lebohan Ratlaha. Mm. Okay, the name I was given in high school. Okay, in high school we used to translate because we used to like R&B music. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we used to imitate some of the artists. Yeah. So we used to translate mm. our same name into the 
English language. Yeah. So since my surname is Ratlaha, mm. then my schoolmates translated my surname to Grad. Right. So since high school, I think I was 14 years old. Mm. So since 14 years old, I was known as Lebo Grass. So it's a trademark for me. Nice. Yes. Look at that. Because at 14, you started doing research on property. And, and now it's like your property industry name, Lebo yes, Grass. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Lebo, for joining us. And I hope that we can continue this conversation uh, to the viewers at home. Continue this conversation in your own spaces with your friends, with your family members. Let's, as women, grow in the property industry and continue to make those big investments. Again, thank you so much, Lebo. Thank you for the invite. Thank you. Everyone at home, stay safe, keep warm, and take care.